So today's headline news, Redfriend predicts the sharpest turn in housing market since the 2008 crash. That's going to be our main event for today. But before we go there, what I want to show you guys or go over the economic calendar to see what in the economy, what in the markets are affecting housing, especially mortgage rates. So what we do is we go over to our economic calendar. You can see there's really nothing for today. We had an action packed week with inflation numbers, job reports, oil indexes and everything else. But there's really nothing coming out today. But so why is the stock market really crashing? Is I don't know if you checked it out yet, but the stock market is crashing again and yields on everything. All interest rates are driving up and up and up. So let's get over to that section of the equation. We have right now the two-year treasury note just topped 3.9%, highest in 15 years. What's, what's the reason behind all this? Well, the reason behind all this is to cure inflation. Okay, so... The federal government or the Fed is trying to really curtail inflation because they have two mandates. One mandate is to keep crazy price stability, AKA inflation. The other piece of their puzzle is the jobs numbers. Well, they're saying, and the government's saying, and a lot of other people are saying, especially on CNBC, that we're not in a recession. Well, how does some of the biggest companies in the world, what are they saying about this? Well, if you go over to here, FedEx, and the, the number one reason the markets are crashing right now is FedEx CEO just came out and says he expects the economy to enter a worldwide, not just a US recession, but a worldwide, worldwide recession. So what do you see in a recession? Well, here's what normally happens. Check out this video because I just did it the other day explaining to you guys what happens in recession, wartime, and pandemic time. It's kind of interesting. So what normally happens is we see the economy robust. So the, the Fed comes in and steps in and drives up rates and drives up rates and drives up rates until what? The economy or inflation starts to cure. Then what usually happens? Again, check out that video. What normally happens is there's a downturn in the economy and it downturns more than what was expected. So then what happens is we enter into a recession. The Fed then looks back and says, oh boy, we overreact like they underreacted for the last few years. So then what do they have to do? They have to then go in and start reducing interest rates. So that's what we're looking at right now. The Federal Reserve is probably going to look at these numbers and say, hmm, they're not affecting the economy like we thought they would. Well, do they realize it's going to take at least six to 12 months for all the actions that they're doing to really take effect? So they're not giving an enough time. So what they're going to most likely do is overreact. So in Q4 of this year, going into Q1 of next year, we're going to go into a recession. Everybody's going to announce that there's a recession. The Federal Reserve is going to overdo it. They're going to have to go in then in Q1 or Q2 and start reducing rates. At least at that time, they're going to stagnate what they're doing because I'm predicting now rates might hit 7% on the trajectory that we're going right now. But I have one article that I just started out the beginning of this conversation with. It's right here. It says, Red Finn predicts the sharpest turn in the housing market since the 2008 crash. The article is pretty interesting, and I'll go through just some key components with you here. So what, what we go through this article, and like I always say, don't judge a book by its cover, but I want to stay on this screen so you don't think I'm moving around to, you, to some different screens. So the first piece of this puzzle I want to go through is going down through here, this article, and I'll put the post down below, is we're going to see a few things. It's saying right here, buyers just don't have the 40% extra toward their housing payment that they had in the past. So what they're saying is year over year, since last year, and since mortgage rates have been going up, they've seen or they've calculated that mortgage payments have gone up 40%. Well, I did about 400 calculations and I can't get 40%. So first off, that one is debunked. The next piece of this puzzle is, well, when you're looking to, or talking about a $1.5 million house, I never talk about a $1.5 million house. I don't even live in a $1.5 million house. So why would I even discuss that? So the next thing is maybe they worked on a $1.5 million house when the rate was here and they're comparing adjustable rate. I don't know what they're doing. So I'm not looking at a $1.5 million house. I don't think you should be either, especially if you're looking to buy your first house. But as we go through this article, here's the one big thing that, that just is odd. So you go down through here, and again, I'm just staying on this page so you guys don't think I'm switching around on you. Let's look at at this caption right here. I'm going to put on my glasses because again, I'm an old fella. Redfin uh, also said now is still a good time to buy if you qualify for a mortgage because you can always refinance. Well, if they're, if they're saying in the headlines it's going to crash and crash as bad as 2008, then in the next context, they're like, okay, now's a good time to buy. I'm not even saying now's a good time to buy. So let's keep reading. If you can find a house that meets all your needs and you're gonna stay in, the, in at least five years, it's still a good time to buy. 
That's what I've been preaching for years and years and years and years, but not when I tell a client, well, the market's gonna crash, but go ahead and buy anyways, because over the years, you're gonna be okay. No, I'm on, the, I'm on the side right now, and I even said in my last few videos, would I be putting my toe in the water right now? No, I'm holding back because I'm waiting for that more inventory to come in as more and more inventory comes in, and, and mortgage rates go from six, maybe 7% now, the market's gonna cool, okay? I never predicted 7%. I thought our highs was gonna be 5.5%. Now we're getting the six, six and a half, seven. My tune's changing a little bit, but I'm not still expecting a crash. What normally happened in the crash, or what happened in the crash in 2008? Shoddy underwriting and a whole ball of wax. You know what the, the, the goal is there, and you know my analogy's there. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you two or one or two videos to click on to learn more and more about the 2008 housing crash. But here's the one thing that just jerks my chain. Here it is. This is puts it all in caption. When asked if we could enter another housing financial crisis, Redfin says it's unlikely. So what the hell are they talking about up here? Redfin predicts turns in the housing market, the worst turn in the housing market since 2008 crash. I don't get it. So that's why you need to not always judge a book by its cover. So why are you here? Well, the main reason you're probably here is what in the heck's going on with mortgage rates? Let's get over to that right now. So there's really no economic news, like I said today, but the markets are still getting hammered. We have MBS is down 17. What does that mean, guys? Your, your call. If the if MBSs are down, what happens to rates? Yes, mortgage rates go up. So what we see right here on the board is this is what's happening to the mortgage-backed security. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street that its yield is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. So when we see the price, this is what you're seeing on the screen. When you see the price of the bond going down, there's an inverse relationship, a flip-flop relationship with interest rates. When the price goes down, rates go up. We love when the price goes up because it drives down rates. Look at the chart down here. Do you see any ups in in, in, other than that? like five days right there that we saw about a month or two ago? No, so it's been catastrophic for the last few uh, months and almost coming on a year right now. Well, based on this, what's going on with mortgage rates? Well, we're now seeing the highest mortgage rates that we've seen in 15 years. Yes, it just peaked to the highest. You can see that right down through here, the 52 week high and low. We basically, I'm, I hope we don't actually triple uh, what our low was, but here's where the here's the six top products people use when they're buying their first house. So these are uh, mortgage rates published by Mortgage News Daily. It's not my rate sheets. It's not a lender's rate sheets. It's basically the national average. Here's what Mortgage News Daily does. They survey mortgage lenders all over the country, saying if you had a client with a five hundred thousand dollar purchase, it was looking to buy their primary home, first home, and they have a seven hundred and forty credit score. They were looking to put twenty percent down. It was going to be their primary home and a single family home. Say that for legal reasons. It is this is what the rates would be. You can see right now we're at 6.33. So we're getting close to six and a half. We haven't seen those since the maybe the 90s. Uh, but you can see right down through here between the 52 week high and low, it's nuts. So here's rates all over the board. My name is Dan Frio. If I can help you in any way with a mortgage, I don't care where you are in the country, we are federally chartered, meaning we can do your loan if you're anywhere in the country as well as Puerto Rico. If you want to find out more about me and my team, all you need to do is go to the rate up Update.com. You can find information about me and my team here. The last thing I want you to tell you is we post all this information on podcasts. And we also have parts of my radio show that I used to do on podcasts as well. So if you want to check out those, go to any one of your favorite podcast stations, Google search or not Google search, search me in there, search Dan Frio, and you're going to come up with the mortgage update with Dan Frio. That's me. Check out the podcast. I hope you enjoy those. Otherwise, if you find value in my channel, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit the bell every time I post a video, you get alert. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.